Welcome back to Forum Chess Club. Today's video is all about the popular opening and very well known opening which is King's Indian Defense. This opening is very popular since it's given players looking for counter attacks as black with some very notable success. Today we are going to lay the groundwork for understanding this fascinating opening by looking at one of the white most aggressive replies in some detail. Let's take a look. The King's Indian has primarily replied to the Queen's pawn opening. So it occurs after the move, pawn to d4, knight f6, pawn c4, pawn to g6, knight to c3, and now just a simple move which is bishop to g7. This is the proper starting point of the opening known as the King's Indian defense. I do want to point out that this simple setup by black, the introducing the bishop and developing the knight, this can be used also against the English. Saying if uh, white would have opened up the pawn uh, to c4 or to knight f3. So black can use this setup against a number of opening moves. This is one of the solid point of this particular opening. Most game in the King's Indian continue with white building upon his space advantage with the pawn to e4. Black replies pawn to d6 and needs to avoid an early e4 to e5 by white. Now what's so unique about this setup for both the sides? With this setup, black has turned its back on one of the major principles of opening play which is they should generally try to establish one or maybe two pawns in the center. But in this position, if you look at it, black has not played any pawns in the center. And in fact, he allowed white a full occupation in the center. However, he is banking on the fact that firstly, he's, he just achieved his development very rapidly. He is already very close to the castling on the king side, whereas white has long way to go. And secondly, he is hoping to eventually launch an effective counter strategy against the center to help with this, he already positioned his bishop on g7 against a sensitive point on the d4. White has few major ways of continuing in this position. In today's video, we are going to deal with the most radical and aggressive moves here, which goes pawn to f4, leading to what's known as the uh, four pawns attack. White has a ferocious pawn front in the center and threatens to literally blow black off with, uh, off the board with an eventual e4 to e5 or f4 to f5. Surprisingly of these white uh, options, the one at e4 to e5 has the weakest reputation as white is continuing to kind of fall behind in development here. He is continuing to leave some squares vulnerable to attack especially this square uh, d4. By studying black's method of playing against the 4-pawn attack, we begin to gain insight into black's strategy as a whole in a king's Indian defense. In this position, black surprisingly just castle normally here. Blacks note that it would be premature for white to play a pawn to e5 in this position without it having uh, developed any of his pieces to support it. Now black can simply, uh, for example here if you look at it, uh, black can simply capture uh, d takes e5, f takes e5, knight uh, e8 and black is ready for the strike in the center with the move um, pawn to c5. This really doesn't seem to lead anywhere for white. Uh, instead he plays knight to f3 finally continuing some development and maybe uh, making this threat to play uh, e5 stronger uh, black has completed the most obvious aspect of his development in this position he has got his king castled and he has developed uh, their pieces here it's time to launch an effective counter strike against white most sensitive point in this position that's going to be the d4 point uh, black has two way to try to deliver a one two punch here and demonstrate that white center is overextended the first way for black is to go about delivering a 1-2 punch in this position would be pawn to c5 attacking the d4. After d5, he delivers the second blow which is pawn to e6. The idea of this setup is just to play pawn takes d5 at some point. Let's imagine that it's black's move, pawn takes d5, pawn takes pawn. Now the target is e4 pawn. Black shift from attacking the d4 to attacking e4 and vigorously develop his pieces and his counterplay in this way. Of course, white has his own move here and depending on what he plays, the play can take on a different character. Black has a more modern and potentially more difficult uh, one to punch for white to handle here. This is to start with a seemingly innocent move which is knight to a6. After bishop to e2, he delivers the second blow which is pawn to e5. With this setup, black is so confident in the weaknesses which are going to be left behind in white's position that he is willing to give up uh, a pawn to destroy the center. Notice that in both the cases, black is attacking the sensitive uh, d4 point and that's how he is beginning his attack in this position. The goal here is to force the pawn on d4 to either trade himself off or move itself to d5. In both the cases, 
This allowed Black to gain stability on the dark squares and then to complete his development more easily since he is he will always know what the pawn structure is going to decide. In this particular position, we are going to see this attack on d4 carried out in a tactical fashion. Let's focus on very tactical idea knight a6 followed by pawn 2 e5. So knight a6 did look like an innocent move, but in fact, it is one of the main many way black can typically deploy the queen's knight in the king's indian. Black is hoping that after he later undermines the center with his move pawn to e5, that he will gain a strong square for knight on the c5 square then he will use this as a basics for attack on the e4 point in the center an example of this occurs after bishop to e2 pawn to e5 once explained in the moment what happens if white try to win a pawn by capturing twice on e5 but first i want to show this key motive to bringing the knight to c5 after one of the main continuation f pawn captures on e5 pawn takes pawn and now pawn to d5. Black would play knight to c5 with a big attack on the e4 pawn. A big secret in the king's indian is that although black attack begins on the dark squares particularly against this d4 point it turns out that he often uses a stability which he gains on the dark square to transfer his attack to the light squares particularly on the e4. We see this in this position that black is now attacking from the dark square on this light square e4. It actually turns out that because white falls so far behind in the development in the 4 pawn attack. It turns out that the black attack on the e4 already has to be taken very seriously. For example, if white made a slightest misstep, a very easy move to, move, uh, to make here would be queen to c2. But now, black would have a crushing blow, knight f takes e4. Now after knight takes e4, bishop to f5, bishop to d3. Black can recover his piece with simply bishop takes e4, and then he can back home to if f5. This variation shows the enormous risk which white is taking by pushing so many pawns in the king's indian and just now uh, just how quickly especially the four pawns attack the black attack can uh, very quickly become revolutionary. In this case we are able to make a sacrifice on e4 and recover the pieces very quickly and black has a better position. Of course I don't want to create the impression that this is what has to happen to white in the four pawn attack the four pawns attack is sound and shouldn't lead to a disadvantage for white by any means. Instead of the queen to c2, for example, white can get a decent play with the move bishop to g5. Though black is also doing quite nicely in this position as well. You are probably probably wondering uh, what happens if white tries to take the pawn uh, d2 to e5 instead of d5. In this case, black could easily regain his pawn by simply playing queen takes queen, bishop takes queen and now knight to g4 with an attack on e5. It wouldn't be possible for white to hold on to this pawn for very long. A more testing idea though which white could use would be maybe knight takes e5. Here black is still able to continue his assault on the center with the move pawn to c5. Totally busting out white extra perfect life in the center and damaging his pawns. White would like to play pawn to d5 here but now knight takes e4. Because of this white generally plays bishop to e3, pawn takes pawn, bishop takes pawn. Trying to hold on to this knight and hold on to the extra pawn in this position. But the knight on the e5 is very shaky. And also the pawn on e4 is also very shaky in this position. Theory shows that while the position is a little bit tricky, it approximately equal its chances for both the sides. This concludes the variation which I wanted to show you for today. Though this look at the four pawns attack, we have started to gain some real insight into King's Indian as a whole. And we have begun to understand some of the key strategic ideas. Black usually uh, first of all stages his counter attack against the dark squares and then shift to trying to put pressure on the center as a whole uh, in order to gain counter chances. With the four pawn attack, I think black chances of equality are very high, but there are some other dangerous attacking ideas for white in the king's indian too. That's all for today and we will see you again with another opening. Thank you for watching.